Hey guys, it's Joe. I'm in Nashville today. Of course, that's home for me. But I'm not just at anywhere in Nashville. I'm at Vintage King here. They've just moved locations recently uh, from the Berry Hill location that you may have seen Warren tour a couple years ago. Uh, now they're in East Nashville. And, and, you know, I thought it'd be fun to come in and meet the gang and take a little tour of their facility. Come on. Kevin calling Kevin. Paging Kevin. Kevin! How you doing, buddy? Good. Good, good to, to see, see you. you. Thanks for how, uh, hosting our a uh, little tour today, a yeah. little walkthrough. We, Welcome we, to we, Vintage Camp. We, yeah, well, I, you know, I've been here, but a lot of people watching may not. So yeah. uh, just to get into it, you guys have a, you have a store in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. You have your Nashville location. Here in Nashville. Yep, and you have a, a, a Detroit. Yeah, so our tech shop is in Detroit. So anything that's getting vin uh, like serviced, like a vintage console, vintage microphone, it's up in Detroit. We have our headquarters there. And then if you're wanting to like actually have a studio experience, welcome to Nashville and our Los Angeles store as well. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, great. Well, let's just get at it. Let's start walking through and looking around. Yeah. You guys have a lot of stuff. What I love about what you guys do is, you know, so, so there's so many music people in Nashville or near Nashville, so many near LA or whatever. Yeah. And you can come in and get your hands dirty. Yeah. And I, I love that. You know, I know, I know people travel from all, I have uh, followers on Instagram and stuff that they reach out to me and they're traveling from all over to, to come to, you know, Los Angeles or Nashville to just get their hands dirty on some yeah. equipment, dream equipment, you know, they're thinking about yes. processing. So you have a lot of, a lot of guitar pedals here. Yeah, we in Nashville, it's called Guitar Town for a reason. Yes, so, yes it is. Uh, we definitely want to have when, because we think of it from like a studio perspective. Like mm -hmm. obviously there's guitar players are playing live gigs and doing stuff like that. But when you're thinking of tools to create the sound to your next record, you want a place that you can come in and figure out what sound that is. So with the, the guitar pedals or the amps or the effects, you want to be able to sit down and figure out what the sound of the next record is going to be like, mm -hmm. and then take that to your studio, do that. So that's our, our big thing is to have some really cool variations of the, the high-end things to help you get that, the new sound, something you've never heard before. The next record. Yeah. yeah. Or some, the classics too. We do all that. Yeah. Nice. This, oh, this is cool. This is cool. So is that a recreation, like a, like a take on a space echo kind of thing? Exactly. Nice. And the name is, it cracks me up because it's literally called an Echo Fix. And that company got <laughs> started because they got famous for fixing all of the old tape echo units. And so they had all the parts, all the materials, and then they just like, you know what, let's make our own company because they were repairing old space echoes. And so that's the Echo Fix is it's spec for spec, th the thing with a couple of like modern improvements. So you have a couple of DSP options to do like a digital chorus or digital reverb, mm -hmm. but then you have the, the traditional traditional spring reverb in there. Very cool. I know the used ones right now are yeah. really high. If you want a 201, yeah. be prepared to part with some cash. Yes. $22.99. $22.99. Okay, yeah. well, that's, that's cool. That's very cool. I may have to demo one of those from you if you don't mind. Yeah. One of these days soon. Yeah, Strymon. Love my Strymon stuff. So cool. Cables. Tyler. I uh, see. Okay, so he's he's located here local now, right? Didn't yeah, he move so here he's a, a local Nashville guy, and he's been good to kind of drop off a couple of amps for us here. And uh, it's funny, that's actually one of my personal amps, and I leave it here because it sounds so good. So when we shoot all of our marketing content, I'm usually grabbing that amp. No, what, in. Did he, does he make it to look weathered like this, or did yes, he do that? so brand new relic finish. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I mean, it literally, I, I remember the last time I was in the room with a 50s era, you know, um, what, what what were they back then? The, um, the Fender made. I'm trying to think of the name. I can't remember. That's exactly what it looked like. Yeah, you know, it just I loved it. I wanted it so bad, but man, if I, it looks good, it's probably going to sound good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. something about having a good fit and finish that yeah. gets you there. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, yeah. let's, let's just take a look. You got some speakers over here. Oh, I'm seeing the some most there. important part over here is we have the Nintendo 64 over here. So if you want to demo some ATCs, some Channel X, yeah, yeah, we're gonna plug, we're gonna plug in the 64. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, that's for our own after hours entertainment. Wow. But the idea is this is kind of a sample rig that we built. This one's built around the SSL Big Six, and then uh, the Cranborn is really cool because that acts as a USB interface as well too for your 500 rack. Cool. So this is. Uh, Dave, our buddy here, is sitting here, and this What's up, is Dave? How you good doing, to see you, buddy. Uh, just a cool way. So we have the Atoms, the ATCs, and the Genel X, and we can pop through and show you some different examples uh, and kind of more of what they would sound like in kind of a home situation. Uh -huh. Kind of we've built this corner, and we go back, we can show you like different studio setups with like, the wall of speakers. The wall of speakers. I've been back yeah. there. It's pretty cool. It's impressive. Yeah. It's impressive. 
But I, I, I actually have those Adams in my tracking room, the A77s. Mm-hmm. I can tell you, I, I really love them. Yes. Bang for the buck is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, it's pretty crazy. Got some modular stuff over here. Yeah, and that's the thing is we want to have a little sampling of everything. So you could come in here and you can be any kind of artist. So that's why there's different guitars and amps and synths floating around is you can come in here and say, hey, I want to track something because we have when we get back to the studio everything but you might say like i you know i can't figure out what preamp i want because i have never plugged this synth through it and then you can figure out man i should really go for the api i need something with that flavor or man i really just need to go classic 1073 you know i mean there's those those options for you you guys have a staff of salespeople that are not just salespeople right most of them are studio owners experienced engineers um that that guys can talk to yeah that's kind of the caveat is yeah. to work at vintage king you kind of have to pass our like gear training class like you have to be able to know the ins and outs of pro tools how to do like build a patch bay you need to know the difference on what a like a 251 or an 87 or a 67 they actually sound like because pe- people are going to ask those questions sure. they have not been able to put their hands on them right. so the idea is that if you work here you're going to be able to help guide people into the sound that they need like price point is always a thing too but really the idea is to get the sound for the record that's the idea right and know your history too know what microphone was used on what record if you're trying to go for that sound yeah so very cool very cool it looks like you have a, you know quite a few quite a few things that you carry in house too you know so people can come down and um, get their hands on something quick yeah so you can come in and pick up uh, Good little interface, microphone, anything like that. We have a bunch of outboard gear. We have a, a fully stocked warehouse too. So if we don't have it here in house, we can get it to you next day usually. Awesome, awesome. Ooh, look here, look here. Love this. I have been wanting to try this. The, the, the new Mojave yes. uh, recreation of the Sony. Is that what that is? The, yes. I can't remember the model number. I've been wanting to try one. Have you of those. used the old Sony's before? Yes, but yeah. it's the thirty-seven. Yep, that's it. Yes, but it's been years. I, I will confess. I love the the Lewis six forties. Yeah, what a workhorse those guys are. Yeah. My gauge for a good mic is if you can just plug it in and the diaphragm sounds good, you know that you can go anywhere with it. And that's my favorite thing about the Lewis stuff is you plug it in, and you're like, oh yeah, I have tons of road to go with it mm-hmm. if i want to com- like add extra compression or eq but just immediately you're like yep i'm getting a good source the noise floor on the lewitt stuff is non-existent yeah i mean it, that's fun for me because you know modern records we're compressing more and sometimes we're doing just an acoustic right and a vocal and you know you use your vintage whatever yeah and it's like oh gosh you know by the time i get that set in the way i want to there's a little more than yes. I remember, <laughs> um, and you know some of their, you know the 1040 and things like that, just are so so yeah. clean. I, I don't know how and they achieve this that. This display is always rotating. Different I'm manufacturers sure. will come in and drop stuff off. We sell stuff out of here. So anytime you pop in here, this little mic display is going to look completely different. We'll have stuff from Telefunk into down to Universal Audio, um, and golly, the Heiserman stuff that we can't keep that stuff in stock. I, I'm wanting to try that. That's their T19, right? Yeah. I'm wanting to try that. I, my One of my dream mics is their 251. Yep. Um, um, in fact, I saw it a couple weeks ago when I was here for an event. And yeah. I, I need to talk to you about demoing that thing because I'm thinking about pulling the trigger on what I really am. Yeah, um, well, yeah, the, the Loughton, I, I love their stuff too. I have a handful of them. Great. Well, let's walk on back and see more. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, before we walk. <laughs> so they can hear some industry standard headphones then. Yeah, uh, a big thing too is knowing if you're trying to mix and master a record and mm-hmm. sometimes you don't have the ability to sit in a fully fleshed out acoustic treated studio, you need to do something stuff on headphones. Right. And you need to kind of find the pair that fits you, like literally fits you, mm-hmm. and also one that you can know what they're representing with the low end, the high end. So, because some people will read on forums, it's like, yeah, this company and this brand is the end all be all. And then it doesn't feel good sitting on their head. And you know, yeah. If you're going to be using it for a lot of hours, that's important. Yeah. You know, it really is. But I, I'll tell you my experience just real quick. I have never found a set of headphones until recently. Yeah. Had never found a head, uh, you know, set of headphones that that I wanted to work on. Mm-hmm. Now, if I was recording, if I was playing drums and guitar, that's different. Yeah. Because there's a lot of headphones that sound good, right, and, and inspiring to work on. But mixing is a whole different thing. It's very different. Um, and I'd never found a pair. And recently, I picked up, uh, you probably have them, the uh, 
the Neumann, um, K, the, the 30s. K, yeah. I'm the, trying the, to, in the, the H- 30s. The 20s, the 30s, and I think they've released the 50s and 80s now. So there's oh, a couple wow. of different lines. Or the, the open backs. Yes. And that was the first set of, because um, I was, at the time, I was actually traveling with Produce Like a Pro to do a master class in Austin. But I was working on a record at the same time. So I was yeah. going back to my hotel at night and working. And uh, anyway, you know, so I had to have something yeah. that I could trust. And, and that, that won me over. But I'd love to come down and try out even more. Yeah, those Sennheiser 650s open backs. Yeah. yeah cool. Um, Do you have any of the Odysseys? Do you carry the Odysseys here? Yeah. So they have a, we have a couple up there. Uh, the ones that have blown me away at the price point is the Manny Merrick. I always want to make sure I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Yeah, but yeah. the the MM 500s are unreal. I know Warren has a couple pairs, I think, that he yeah. that he really likes. So, um, yeah. To cool. me, that's a musician who's taken the headphone experience and saying, this is what I want. How do I translate that? Right. Because uh, everything else is like, sometimes you can be looking at a graph. Mm-hmm. And looking at a graph can get you so far, it can get you certain specs. But the end user experience and art and music is so subjective that... It, it, yeah. And the thing is, for me, finding a set of headphones that sounded like a speaker was the challenge. Yeah. Because I don't want that shock of putting on a set of headphones and I'm in a different dimension. You're not you, going to take there. two NS10s and take them to your head? <laughs> well, you've been, you know, I've been there where you put on the headphones to check something, you take them off, and then your speakers sound all wacky. It's, yep. ah, I just need something that's consistent, you know, back yeah. and forth. And it's, it's hard to find. Yeah. Well, let's step back into the good stuff. Yeah. So I'll take you back to kind of our main studio area. And so you'll immediately get caught by kind of our synth uh, keyboard <laughs> world. Yeah. I'm caught up uh, instantly in this. Yeah. This is one of the most dope looking keyboards I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, so it's kind of a like a hole like in the market. You can't go buy a Fender Rhodes right now. True. So Vintage Vibe has filled that hole in the market because it's like not being able to buy a Strat or a Tele or a 335. It's like that's such a staple instrument. Yeah. And when you think of like a Rhodes or a Whirly, it's a staple instrument. Just just as hot as they ever were. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's now you can get one. This we have the the limited edition color, which is fun. Uh, the other really fun thing too is it's fully stereo, this one. And then we have the brand new stereo spring reverb, which is a unit that has blown me away. Is this made by the same company? No, they're different. So okay. this is Wellspring and this is vintage. Okay, Pop. gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Well that is an incredible looking piece of gear. Yeah, but, I mean, then yeah, we have everything. So if you Nord. need to come pick up a, a Nord the, for the, the live stuff, or even just the simple thing of not having to mic a piano, you right, can get right. a great sound with Nord. I, I got to tell you, you know, it, being a, a working engineer in the studios so often, the Nords are like the keyboard of choice right now. Yeah. Uh, every, every studio stud name that we could throw out there just about is dragging these around to, to sessions. That's kind of the guy right now mm-hmm. so yeah, i mean you i if i had a dollar for every time i seen a red keyboard get dr- <laughs> drugged into a studio yeah 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 but i mean it's for for good reason the, you know like you said I, i've been on sessions before and the piano tuning you know starts going a little wonky yeah. by the end of the day and the piano is a, a big factor on the record you can't have a p- piano tuner just just <laughs> pop up anytime you know you got to schedule that stuff so we'll just switch to the Nord patch, yeah. You know, and finish the record out, and you know it works. And because yeah. a lot of those older keyboards, let's face it, the the, the piano sound it just wasn't quite realistic. Yeah, it may have been good, but it, if it's on the same record with a real acoustic C7, it's like, yeah, that's <laughs> that song. You know, wasn't yeah, just wasn't getting there. But the Nord, man, it, it can it can hold its own. Yeah. So this is one of our main features. Is oh yeah, the speaker wall. This is one of the most subjective areas with buying studio gear that everyone is going to have a different opinion, a different experience, and it really comes down to we all have different ears yep. and we all have different musical preferences. And when I kind of talk through people finding the right monitor for their space, it's kind of like, yeah, the guy over at Focal, like he has his set of ears, he has his musical preferences, and he's looking at the graph and the chart, and the guy at Barefoot has his experience. And those mm-hmm. designers are some of the smartest people you've ever met, make the most incredible pieces, and they're going to do slightly different things. Mm-hmm. So what's going to work for your room and your record? And that's, you have to come listen to them half the time. That's true. Man, I, there's not a piece of gear in the studio that is more user you know, specific than a speaker. Yep. We can, all of us can have a U67 in our studio and know what it works great on. Exactly. An 84, whatever. We can just go down the list. But 
man, the speaker that I love, you could hate and could never work on it and vice versa. Yeah. So I, I, pre, I honestly appreciate, because I've, I've done it myself and I've had numerous friends in town as well as uh, from all over book time with you yeah. here um, just to shoot out the three that they're models that they're, you know, trying to decide between. I love that guys have that option. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's really cool. Really cool. And so, you'll have to hear the difference, too, because different companies will use different amps. You mean some like an uh, amp might have a class D mm-hmm. or uh, another speaker might have like a class AB, and that'll react and compress differently. The louder you get into it, the frequencies might change. Right. So actually in person hearing them is the way to do it because no one wants to pay return shipping on huge boxes. <laughs> yeah, 100 pounds of speakers. Yeah. Right, right. Now, would you set them up like over in this area so they're kind of hearing the same uh, thing, you know, sometimes yeah, like so all, we can move all around the room. Nice. Uh, the one thing that would be hard to move is our Atmos room. So, right, um, yeah. Oh, well, I see, you know, we'll spin the camera and we've got a second uh, station over here. Yeah. So Jordan's sitting at one of our producer desks. What's up, Jordan? How you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we have a bunch. We have different stuff from Neumann to Focal. Uh, Output is a company that we're big fans of. What are, what are these? Uh, Jordan, what are the specs on those? Mezzanovics. I have not seen or heard these. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to hear those just yet. Those have been sitting over here for a few days. Um, We just got them in, and that's kind of the fun thing is I'm still learning everything because there's new companies. It's kind of like NAM in here. Every every, six months, man, you're starting over, aren't you? (laughs) Yes. So that's what keeps us on our toes is uh, there's literally, we're supposed to get a shipment today of the new um, antelope monitors. And I've never heard those. I did not even know they were making monitors. Yeah. 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 So that we get these in all the time. And that's the fun thing is we get to be excited about the gear. Oh yeah. 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 It'd be it'd be hard for me to go home at five p.m. You know, or whatever. Yeah. It's, <laughs> wait a minute, we just got this new. <laughs> yeah, no. Behind yeah. the curtain, we literally just unboxed those. <laughs> wow, wow. So, I mean, they're yeah. they're good looking. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like that finish. That's cool. We'll have to. Um, of course, when this video goes live, you guys are probably going to get a phone, bunch of phone calls to want to demo. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> want to demo them. Yeah. But uh, hey, that, m- might as well, right? That's yes. what I'm here for. I. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of these I've heard. I, I want to take a test drive of these someday. Amphion, how do you pronounce it? Amphion? Amphion? Am- tomato, tomato. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> focal or focal. I've heard every yeah. every iteration. I've heard these. Uh, you know, love yeah. these. These are great. I've heard these. Love those. I, I, I like the Neum- I like what Neumann is doing with monitors nowadays, too. Yeah. Uh, you, I, Neumann, I, you can do the whole line through. You can do right, microphone, right. interface, yes. monitor, headphones. That's, that's yeah. a fact. Um I have these and love these. Absolutely yeah. love them. Great speakers. And, you know, great price point, too. Yes. Um, gosh. The, you mentioned the Amphions. The reason that these have been so popular is it's the next extension, in my mind, my personal opinion, of an NS10. You're going to have that mid-range experience, mm-hmm. but more of the lows and the highs that will come through. Because if you're so used to working on some NS10s, mm-hmm. but you know that you're missing some stuff... It's the way to get into that, but not deviate too far out of that. Okay. Well, I'd love to hear them sometime. That's cool. I, I actually do like that um, not overly front-to-back, carved-away sound. Yep. Yeah. I know, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, some monitors really excel at that. But me, personally, I have a hard time working on them yeah. because they're already kind of... Um, Everything sounds so good already. Yeah. So I need a monitor to, that I, that sounds good, but like I can, I feel like I need to work. <laughs> yeah. You know, then I know I'm getting a you know a great mix at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm getting a great mix, <laughs> with, and that yeah. the phone <laughs> the phone continues to ring. Yeah. So, um, anything else we need to see right back here? Yeah. Uh, the other fun thing too is we display a bunch of stuff. So we have the aux out for some silent tracking. So in this space too, you can see the the cloud above us. We track drums in here. We shoot pretty much all of the Vintage King marketing content out of here too. So this room is always in transition, moving around. And it's fun filming the videos in here because we're moving stuff around too. So it's like the big thing is like our tape machine right Mm -hmm. now. So that's the the two track one from uh, Chris Mara. Uh, and he's based at 1979 Studios down here in Nashville, and he built some of the coolest pieces. That's cool. So you um, just don't you don't see things like that being built anymore. So that's that's incredible. 
Yeah, that's the thing with like the vintage vibe or the echo fix. It's like mm-hmm. there's companies that have found there's pieces of gear that have historical significance. And we still want them. And we still want them. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Even though they're not available anymore. So somebody might as well do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have been, I've been thinking about getting one of these, to be honest, the Ox. Um, such a cool box. Yeah. Well, you, how about we step back here into, this is kind of the, 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 uh, the headquarters. Yeah. This is, <laughs> what's the word? The grand finale. Yes. Yeah. This is, this is where it gets really good back here. So working in this space, we have found that it's kind of fun. We joke, if you're facing this direction, you're working in the digital landscape on the Avid rig in Atmos. And you work in this direction, you're working on the analog rig with uh, the ATCs, the Barefoots, and the Neve 8424. Um, One of the reasons that we've decided to display this specific specific desk Mm -hmm. here in Nashville is so many people start in the home studio world and they've built up a rack of gear. They already have a couple of favorite pre's, like a couple of outboard compressors or EQs, and they're looking to get up into working on a desk. Mm-hmm. And they don't have $100,000 to drop on that next upgrade, right. but they do have the money to get an 8424. And so this is the amazing way to get console sound, but you're not paying all that additional cost to get all these outboard pre's, EQs. Does this have any pre's built into it? So it has two. Two, okay. So you have two right there, and then you have a 500 slot that you can pop something in and out of right there. So you can just plug directly into the desk, get two lines, get up and running. But the idea is that you're gonna incorporate this into your existing rig. Okay. So it's like for us, we have our patch bay, we have all of our external racks, 500, 19 inch rack, uh, and then we're working around the room. Uh, and it's a really great way to get a consistent workflow, but you can change the sound of the record. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like if that specific eight lines of drums needs to be API, you can do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can come in and get a handful of these 312s right. and track drums with that, but then you're not committed to 1073s down the line. Mm-hmm. You can do exactly what you want to do for each source. If you found kind of, it's like creating your studio sound. You know what I mean? When people book you, they're booking your sound a little bit. Yeah, yeah sure. You yeah. can create your own custom sound by what outboard pieces you filter into this. So three aux sends, as well as a stereo. God, yeah, sweet. Interesting, cool. And you got the, I love these things. Yeah. When I go into a room to track, mm-hmm. and, and when they have those setting up on the speaker bridge or whatever, I'm yeah. you know, generally pretty happy. <laughs> the imaging of an ATC45 is, it's something if you haven't heard in person, you need to hear. It is unreal. I love the mid range too. There's yeah. something that, that mid range is just really special. So our our uh, Atmos room rig is Focals. Yes. Yeah. So you got these. Yeah. The, 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 the trio uh, seven, and then the solos up there. Okay. Um, and this room was fully tuned and authorized by Dolby. So you come in sitting here, and it's fully up to spec. Thomas Dolby or the company? Uh, the company. Okay. <laughs> Just to be clear. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, I actually heard, uh, you know, the demo a couple weeks ago during your block party. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, sound, it sounded great. It really, yeah. was, it was fantastic. You got the big subs up there too. What do we have? We have a Pulse, Poltec mid-range. That's the mid-range version, right? Yep. We have a retro stay level, 2A76, just, just all the good stuff we would want to have. Yeah, and this is the thing too, is we're always in rotation here. I'm sure. Uh, that's why we haven't labeled our patch base super well. Uh, <laughs> somebody will buy it as soon as you label it. Yeah, because uh, someone will buy it or yeah. they'll come in and that's the one that they need. Uh, and the other thing too is companies want to display and show their certain sounds. So there's a couple of staples. You know, what I mean, yeah, you yeah. know that you're going to need to have an LA2A sure. around or an 1176. And because there's people that have used the plug-in version, then they've never actually heard the hardware. Right. So we try to keep those staples around. But some of the the fun um, ear candy pieces, things like that, that's in rotation, and that's half the fun. Oh sure. Finding, I, I've said it multiple times, but it's found in finding the sound of the record. Warren just did a tour of this facility, uh, the you know we're up in Iowa, mm-hmm. where they make uh, all their their stuff. That's such a cool story, you know, getting all those Abbey Road sch- schematics that are yes. decades old, yeah, and uh, recreating pieces a- as original as they can be. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a, if you haven't watched the video, watch that video. That is that was that was a fun that was a fun thing. 
So we got the, the Avid controller here. Yes. Uh, and that's when you dive into the, the Atmos world of mixing. Uh, it is, it shouldn't be as intimidating as it is. There's right. always that curve. But as soon as you sit down and you look at how everything's routed, it becomes musical. And the fun thing is now people are starting to track mm -hmm. thinking Atmos. I, I, you're right. Because normally you're going to track and you're like, oh, I have to cut all the low end out of this baritone guitar because I need it to fit in this corner of my mm -hmm. mix. And now it's like, no, I'm just going to track full spectrum on it yeah. because I know it's going to live in this speaker. And then you can do a couple of those mixes and then everything has a different approach. And so working with the, the really fun thing is there's the Apple Studios here in Nashville and we help build those. And they, we talk to them about working with artists because to get something on a sync license in a TV show, on a movie, you're gonna have to have an Atmos mix. Mm -hmm. So people are thinking about that because they want their music to be heard, put in movies, put in TV. So they're thinking about, man, I'm gonna track this next record how do I prepare for that? I, I'm already uh, on orchestra dates and drum dates, already throwing up extra sets of, of room mics. Yeah. And I'm recommending the other guys do too, um, just because just we, we don't know. You know, that, that indie artist that maybe doesn't have the budget or even the mindset of Atmos yet. Yeah. But they're going to record that song. And what if it does really well for them? Like they're getting the streams, it gets placement somewhere, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, have that extra set of, even if they're not going to use them in the stereo mix and they're just going to set on a hard drive, go ahead and track them. Yeah. You know, because you may be turning out an Atmos mix two years from now and you'll have it on tape. Yeah. You know, uh, or, well, hard drive. <laughs> The Better Maker. I, I have the Better Maker um, st stereo uh, EQ. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, I love it. What a great piece that is. Yeah, the Mastering Limiter is a really fun piece, and it's. I've never, I've never used the limiter. I, I'd, I'd love to though. Yeah, the be able to recall your settings. I can't. Yeah, I mean, we've got a plug-in interface, right? Uh -huh. I, I do with the EQ at least. Yeah. With the limiter, you do as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just plug it in USB. I can't, and you can the mastering guys that have done a record submitted it and then two months later the artist or management comes back and said hey we need this slight tweak and they forgot to jot down their settings yeah, yeah. And they can just recall it yeah. just save it so it's an analog circuit but digitally controlled yep. um, recallable settings i think it's a great you know, great concept but that right behind you is some really sexy stuff yeah uh, uh, i could just stay here for just a little while <laughs> if you don't mind i'm going to need a minute Shadow Hills, gosh, I, I love these guys. I love these. This, I'm probably gonna have to just buy one from me. I have been lusting after Fusion. I don't know why I haven't pulled the trigger. You know, it's just time yeah. probably to take, you know. Uh, the, the vintage, if you, anybody that hasn't tried the vintage drive fe feature on that, just a little bit, you know, just, I mean, literally you can turn it to right there and your mix is going to be better. That's just a, to me, that's a very special box. Plus you got the stereo widening. You got the, the high and low end EQ. Uh, it's just, I don't know. What are these selling for now? Do you know? Uh, that's the thing is there's uh, consistent. <sighs> I, can, I honestly don't remember, but it, it's not all, it's not unattainable. And no, they're super within reach. Yeah. And it's amazing. I've got to get one. Uh, I'm literally, <laughs> I like it so much that I am running a plug-in on my stereo. If, if I'm using a hybrid mix, yeah. I'll use the plug-in version of this first and then go into outboard. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I need to, I just need to get the hardware and just make it The make it stereo happen. imaging function on that has actually made its way into the live world because mm -hmm. it is so good. So all those huge tours that you're hearing, the, the live guys have been bringing this box out just to get the stereo width on it. That's cool. Yeah. And you could, of course, they've got the transformer you can gauge on the output. I mean, there's a lot packed into two spaces here. A lot yes. of stuff. A lot of stuff. API. Love it. These, these are cool. Mm -hmm. These are so cool. I use them on drum overheads a lot. You know, it just adds a, a girth, you know, that's just pretty hard to, once you hear it, it's like you don't want to live without it, you know? Yeah. Mogs Airband, man. Yeah, that's the, these, I am very interested in these. I think yes. I, I'm gonna have to ask for a demo because it's like, wait a minute, a digitally controlled EQ, but that's a hardware piece that drives through tubes and yeah. you can recall it, you know, in the box and stuff. It's like, wait, I, 
I got to know what this is all about. <laughs> the, the whole Tegler line is insane. And they actually have one of the coolest programs is they want to demo the gear. So if you're not in Nashville or LA and can get to one of our shops, mm -hmm. they'll help facilitate a demo through one of our sales reps for you. Oh, that's cool. So they want you to hear their gear because it's one of those things. As soon as you plug in, sit, start tracking, sending files or whatever you're doing through it, you're like, oh, that's it. You just, it's an immediate sell. If they're brave enough to send their stuff all over the country like that, they believe in themselves. And I like, I like that. I like yes. a guy that says, my stuff is so good. And <laughs> once you get your hands on it, you will not send it back. But Casty, I mean, just great stuff. I love that though. So people can come down here, bring their tracks. Yep. So you allow people to bring a hard drive. Exactly. Set right there. Yep. Open up their session, patch in and play. Yeah. Right. Now, how, how, you know, long in advance, do you recommend they try to, to book that, you know, if they need some time with you? Yeah, usually a couple of days. And we were a fully functioning studio. So if you want to sit down with an engineer, you're going to book it like a studio. You're going to come in, you're going to be prepared. You want to be able to sit down and the engineer's already pulled your session up, already got everything routed, the patch mm -hmm. bay is going, mm -hmm. the mic is up that you need to, that you're starting with if you're going to cut a vocal. Um, but that's the fun thing is it's free of charge. Yeah. What other studio could you walk in? into and demo their stuff free of charge. And obviously it's like, we're trying to get you to buy the well, right sure. piece for right. your thing. But the I idea is it's like, we want to be involved with you making music. Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head for me, at least the idea is to get them to buy the right piece, not just buy a piece, Yeah, but you know, get that thing that you're looking for. Cause I know, I mean, it's happened to me where I thought, and this is not an actual example, but I thought this is what I wanted. Yep. Only to find out this is what I wanted. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? You know, just based on you, all, all the information that's in magazines and, and on websites and stuff is great. But until you hear it, man, you just don't know. And oh, th is, this is the new heritage. Yes. Yeah. And this position in our rack has changed out. So there's three, I think, current reproductions of uh, this, and they all sound a little different. Mm -hmm. They all have a certain edge. Uh, this specific, the 670 model, has this sweet low end mm -hmm. that just, it was unbelievable because it didn't make it soft or gushy or anything, and it didn't overly tighten and make it modern. It was just like, oh wow, it completely gave it this bloom and that 3D shoulder, mm -hmm. but didn't like change my entire vibe of the record. Interesting. I mean, I love this idea uh, of coming down, bringing my sessions, and hearing the big thing my too, speakers, hearing whatever I want to. Is if we don't have the piece of gear in the rack, that's if you book in advance, let us know, and we'll try to pull it in for you. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like sometimes we we might we might not have that two fifty one that you're wanting to hear, mm -hmm. but give us a couple of days and we'll pull it into the studio for you, and we'll ship it in from our Detroit warehouse or Los Angeles and move stuff around. We want to be able to get you the right thing for the record. Yeah, one thing I will say, I follow I follow the there's three accounts I believe if I remember right, the Vintage yeah. King account, mm -hmm. Vintage King Nashville. Vintage King LA, yep. right? I follow all the all you guys on Instagram. And yeah. It seems like throughout the year there's a lot of events where yeah. you're bringing in, a, you know, AT, whoever is coming in with their product line yep. and a representative, maybe some engineers that they respect in the industry talking about specific gear or demoing something. Um, and that's really cool. So yeah. I highly recommend everybody follow you guys on all those websites. If you're anywhere near Nashville, even if you're not, because I, I have followers um, that reach out to me to let me know they're in town strictly to come to an event that's scheduled here. Yeah. And it's like, hey, is there any chance I can get a studio tour? I'm going to be in town because somebody's speaking at Vintage King or something. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, but the only way to know about those events is to follow you guys, of course. So The other crazy thing, too, is we have people fly in from around the country because a plane ticket is a few hundred bucks. And when you're investing into, like, I'm looking at a set of studio monitors that are over $10,000, right. the idea is that you're going to sit down and be able to know that you're making the right purchase is, that's unbelievable. Like, yeah. It's, that, I think that's so cool. I did, yeah. And the airport is not a far drive from here either. I know that for a fact. No, and I just did it. It's a $28 Uber. So <laughs> nice. nice. All right. Which, you know, is the cost of the IEC cable and ATC. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Man, I appreciate your time today. Yeah. You want to walk us out? We'll, we'll, uh, Eric, we'll, let's just make one more pass and make sure there's nothing that we've missed. It's really cool. We didn't, we, we missed Jordan. No, we actually said hey to you earlier. You guys have a Heiserman 251 here, don't you? Uh, I think I mentioned it earlier. 
I'm not. gonna need a demo on that. Yes. Can you hook a guy up? Well, right now you need to peel it from Dave Cobb's hands. Oh, he, Dave! <laughs> he took our demo last well, week. We, we should just knock on his door, surprise him <laughs> with the camera in his face, and say, yeah. hey, we want to hear the 251. Is that a vintage Gefell down there? No, so that's a, a reissue. But if you're looking for something vintage, the the reason that we have a full location in Detroit is the, our, like the owners got nicknamed the Vintage Kings by doing that up in Detroit. So if you in the Motown era, so, you, you needed your like your your console fixed, your mic fixed. We were the guys that were doing that. So Vintage King, the name comes from the nickname of Tex. Maybe? Yeah, oh, that's cool. It's, I don't. I don't that's think our history. I, knew that. I don't think and I knew so that. Our like our physical locations in L.A. and Nashville show a lot of the new gear on how to do a lot of that stuff. But our bread and butter is the vintage stuff, and that's based out of Detroit. And we have techs that have worked our, for our company for decades. So it's like if you want to get a vintage like '67 or whatever you have your your eyes and ears on, mm-hmm. we can get and source that for you. We can put you on a watch list. We usually have them in stock, uh, or we know how to get them because we broker and are friends with so many of these large studios. The other thing, too, is it's going to come with a full tech report and a one-year warranty. You, a one-year warranty on a vintage piece that's like 50 yeah. years old? Oh, wow. That's And that's the thing is, like, we believe in our techs, and that's we're still kind of take pride in that name. The, we are the vintage kings because if you go and hop on Craigslist or your, like, used retailer, like, uh, springreverb.com or whatever it is. It's like you can find what you're looking for, but you're taking a chance. You don't know the history of that mic. It's going to show up broken or a bad tube or anything like that. When you buy from us, you're going to get the whole history of everything and the warranty. Like that's huge. That that that's absolutely huge. That's that's fun to know. So they so you you have an inventory of vintage gear. So yep. if they go to vintageking.com, you yeah. can see what you have. Yep. But if I understand you right, if I'm looking for a a vintage Sony 37, yeah, and you don't have one currently, I get on a watch list. Yeah. So you normally we'll pair you with a like a sales engineer, like a sales rep, things like that. We will pair you with a sales rep and find you the the thing that you're looking for. It's because there's little nuances, a capsule change or a power supply and things like that. So you can go through and find, hey, if we're using the 67 as an example, it's like, hey, there's three different versions. Do you want one that's this price point up here, but everything is original? Do you want one with a changed transformer in the power supply or a changed tube or whatever it could be in whatever like specific gear mm-hmm. and take you down the line and find you the thing for the budget with the history and a warranty on it. That's that's really cool. I'm glad. I'm actually glad to find that out myself. I did not know that. Yeah. Cool. Well, I just really appreciate your time. Yeah. And Thanks for just stopping by. Do you, dude, you how you doing? Good, good to see you. Good, good to see you. Thank you for your time. If yeah. people call, will they possibly? They're going to talk to Cody. Yeah. Cody They're going to talk to Cody. Ideally. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to sell them some stuff. Try to. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we we gonna we're gonna go eat some hot Nashville hot chicken. Yes. All Be right. Careful. All right. Yeah. We will. We will. All right. Well, thanks again for your time. Absolutely. Mm-hmm.